Hi everyone, it's Sandy Holterhaus, your rec center dietitian, and today we are going to learn about insulin resistance. So this is something a lot of people don't really talk, you know, learn about or know about in relation to uh, pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes, but it's that very first part um, of beginning that development of those diseases. So it's really important to start learning about insulin resistance and knowing your fasting blood glucose levels and their trend. So let's get started. So the role of insulin in the body. So insulin is a hormone. It's uh, produced in your pancreas and it's produced in action to, uh, in our case here, the amount of food that you are eating, in particular carbohydrate. So the more carbohydrate we take in in our diet in the form of sugars, you know, grains, starchy vegetables, fruits, um, milk that contains galactose, um, the more insulin we have to kick out to help bring that blood sugar back down. So um, insulin helps that glucose get pushed into the cells of the body that need it the most. So your muscles, if you're being active and liver for storage and also in the fat for storage. So that liver would be more of a temporary storage for your glucose in the form of glycogen. And that fat might be a more um, long-term storage system for um, that where insulin is taking um, those extra blood sugar that you are taking in. And you know the reason is that insulin's job is to try to maintain your blood glucose level in a healthy range. So it keeps working on um, trying to move it into the cells, but it, as it be, starts to become more resistant, that becomes um, more difficult, more difficult, and that blood sugar level starts to climb up over time. So um, glucose, again, comes from the food that you eat or it comes from those temporary stores in the liver. So if you are in a fasted state, say first thing in the morning um, and your blood sugar is starting to go low, your liver will split, spit out glycogen, which um, is restored to glucose for energy. We need that energy to run our body. Um, so again, when we release that insulin um, after eating those carbohydrate rich meals, um, that whole job is to transport that glucose from our bloodstream into the cells where it's needed. So if you're active and running, um, you're going to bur burn much more blood sugar than if you're sitting on the couch, you know, eating a bag of chips or eating something with uh, carbohydrate in it. So um, there's a lot of factors that play a role here. Um, so as long as that insulin secretion and the glucose transport system work well, then your blood glucose will stay, stay in a healthy range. And here's just another way to look at it. So if we start up at this top uh, picture here, you eat food, you eat carbohydrate, you probably eat mixed fuels, you're probably eating protein and fat as well. But that rise in blood sugar is most generally from the carbohydrate that you're eating. And your body then needs to make insulin and produce that out of the pancreas to help to bring that blood sugar back down to a normal level. So um, when you start to develop that insulin resistance, um, those blood sugars are knocking on the doors of those cells, but they're not able to get pushed and transported into those cells. So your cells start to feel like they're starving. Um, and what is easily done then is that blood sugar gets transported and stored as fat in your body. And a lot of that could be that visceral fat that you see wrapping around the organs, which um, contributes to insulin resistance. Now um, you feel tired, but you also feel hungry because you are not getting the um, energy that you need pushed into those cells when you have insulin resistance. So then you begin to eat more food. And so it starts a vicious cycle of how insulin resistance develops in the body. Um, so again, in insulin resistance, your cells are not responding well. They're not accepting uh, the transport of that glucose into them so that 
glucose begins to build up in your bloodstream. And that's when we typically see that rise in that blood sugar. And that will indicate to us, if we're watching the trend, that we may be developing insulin resistance. And you might notice that trend even before you reach 100 um, milligrams per deciliter, because that is where they will tell you all of a sudden that you have prediabetes. So if you can catch that trend and watch that trend from your records, and you see that your fasting blood glucose used to be 85, but now it's 95, um, you're going to want to say, oops, maybe I need to do something to start making some changes now so that I don't continue this trend up towards prediabetes. Um, so a couple of things that can help certainly are weight loss and exercise to help reverse insulin resistance. Um, so again, just a, a little statement here, insulin resistance begins before you are diagnosed with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. So if you're watching those numbers go from, again, 85 to 95 to 97, and they're trending up, it's just a matter of time before you're going to reach that level where you're at 100, and all of a sudden the doctor says, um, you have prediabetes. And most of the time our jaw drops open because no one said that we've developed insulin resistance all that time. You're just hearing, oh, your numbers are still in the normal range. But if they're trending up, then that's a clue to you to start really watching um, and start thinking about making some um, lifestyle changes at that point. Um, again, so without that intervention, you'll continue to become more insulin resistant and your blood sugars will continue to rise. Uh, some people are asymptomatic. Some people start to have some symptoms as they develop prediabetes. Um, but the, the number one thing here is to know those numbers, those fasting gluco glucose numbers, so that you can begin to take action early on. Um, primary causes of insulin resistance, obesity or overweight and belly fat. So you're starting to go through that cycle of eating more food and still feeling hungry and tired because the sugars aren't getting forced into the cells where they need to go for energy. Um, so you notice that um, if you have an inactive lifestyle and you're not burning that blood sugar, it's got to be stored somewhere. So generally, again, it's stored as fat in the body. If you're eating a diet that is high in carbohydrate, um, that's going to contribute to um, those spikes in blood sugar, um, those continual spikes in insulin as well. And then that insulin um, can eventually wear out and, the, can't, and uh, begins to not push, again, that um, insulin into the, or the glucose into the cells where it needs to be. So... Um, some women develop insulin resistance while they're pregnant, and they term this gestational diabetes. Um, so you may have insulin resistance if um, your fasting blood glucose is creeping up, say it's 90 to 99. That's going to be uh, kind of a warning signal to you that you want to start watching it. Um, when you get that high in that 90 to 99 level, that's going to increase your risk for heart disease because the more sugar in your blood, the thicker the blood, the easier it is to lay down those plaques in your vessels. Um, if you have a waistline over 40 inches for men or 35 inches for women, if your blood pressure readings are creeping up, that can mean that you're laying down those plaques, your blood is thicker not moving as well. So if you're 130 over 80 or higher, that can be a concern. Um, your triglyceride level is high. That can mean that you're, again, not pushing the glucose into the cells where it needs to be and you are storing a lot as fat. Um, so if that's above 150. An HDL or healthy cholesterol level under 40 for men or under 50 for women. So you wanna watch that as well when you're checking those numbers. Uh, skin tags can be an indication of um, insulin resistance. And those patches of dark velvety skin, that's called ankyndosis nigricans. And that's usually under the arms is where you would see that begin to develop. If you have sleep apnea, maybe your partner's telling you that you're snoring and you're stopping breathing during the night. Um, or if you are always hungry, that can be a sign or indication of insulin resistance. Um, 
So there are a lot of um, diseases that are related to insulin resistance. So just so you know some of them here, um, prediabetes certainly, that's that kind of next step after you develop insulin resistance. If you get between 100 and 125 for that reading for your fasting blood glucose. Type 2, two diabetes, that would, that step after prediabetes when your blood sugars start to read 126 or above. Um, and that gets concerning because there are a lot of things that um, can happen um, or other disease risks that uh, are also come along with um, developing type 2 diabetes. So again, that dyslipidemia or that high cholesterol or the low healthy cholesterol, um, the high triglycerides, hypertension, again, cardiovascular disease, uh, PCO. S, that polycystic ovarian syndrome that some women develop that has an insulin resistance component as well as um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease that has that insulin resistance component. Gout is now associated with insulin resistance and kidney disease, eye problems, cancer, Alzheimer's, and rheumatoid arthritis are all other uh, diseases that are now um, related to insulin resistance. So um, a lot of information they're finding out about um, the um, dire effects of having that insulin resistance and that too high of blood sugar. So here are some strategies to increase insulin sensitivity. So insulin sensitivity would be the opposite of insulin resistance. We want our um, insulin to be sensitive to getting into the cells um, that where it needs to go. So um, those uh, strategies would be to get seven to nine hours of sleep every night, uh, trying to perform some cardio and weight training exercises during the week, most days of the week, uh, doing activities to practice stress reduction, losing weight, and generally they say about five to seven percent of your body weight can really help bring those blood sugars back down. Um, but also, you know, a small weight loss of uh, 10 to 15 pounds can um, additionally help. So any weight loss can, can assist in helping to bring those blood sugars down. Um, increase uh, soluble fiber intake. Um, that helps with lowering cholesterol, um, helping that blood flow easier in your vessels and uh, helping to... Uh, make you healthier overall. And then increasing colorful fruits and vegetables, reducing that carbohydrate intake. Again, then you don't have to spit out as much insulin. Your pancreas doesn't have to work as hard and your blood sugars can stay more stable as well. Reducing those added sugars, um, adding a pinch of cinnamon. Cinnamon has been shown to help um, reduce blood sugar. You can drink green tea. That's really great for inflammation in the body. And then avoiding those trans fats um, that we see on labels on food, which are partially hydrogenated oils. Those are uh, probably the most unhealthy fats for the body that can contribute to heart disease. Um, if you do have insulin resistance or you're developing prediabetes, a lot of times your doctor might prescribe metformin. It helps to improve that insulin sensitivity. Or um, a couple other common medications might be Actos or Avandia, and those help to improve that insulin resistance, but they also help reduce the liver output of blood glucose. So that helps to keep the blood um, glucose more in check as well. So that was my final slide on insulin resistance. I hope that provides you some really good information. Um, and even if you, you know, are still in that stage of insulin resistance and haven't developed prediabetes or uh, type 2 diabetes yet, I hope you will still uh, watch these next videos because I think all the information is really important to have, um, especially if you are, um, you know, trying to reduce carbs, trying to um, prevent insulin resistance and lose some weight there as well. So next week we'll talk about uh, prediabetes this week we will also be talking about uh, reducing, reducing saturated fats and triglycerides in the diet so that will be one of our side topics 
And that's all for today. So I'll hope to see you again soon. Thanks.